Day one of our hike of Kilimanjaro, we are currently in the town of Moshi, which is set in the foothills of Kilimanjaro. We arrived to Kilimanjaro International Airport just a few days ago. We prepared everything that we need to go on the hike. We're currently just having some breakfast here and waiting for our tour guides to pick us up and take us on this five day adventure. So come with us as we explore the <laughs> Kilimanjaro hike and hopefully we'll see you on the very top within five days. You ready? Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> An hour and a half of driving from Moshi to Marangu, we finally arrived. Now the guys are unpacking all the gear from the van, and we are about to get ready to go. So as you can see, this is the starting point of Marangu route. There's some people who are gonna have a day trip on bicycle. All the porters getting stuff ready for different groups. People coming up and down the mountain with food, luggage, and different things. So we're ecstatic to get this trip started. For reals. <laughs> so we haven't even started and got our first lunch already to put on our bags. <laughs> She's got some veggie options. I guess yeah. we'll see <laughs> in a few hours what that's all about. So today we're going from the entrance of Marangu Gate to Mandara Hut, 8 kilometers, and it should be 3 hours, so let's see if we make it in time. Alright, so we just made it through the gate, we just went through a very small security. They asked if we brought a drone, which we didn't, so we're good to go and ready to get started for first three hours on the first day of the Marangu route in Kilimanjaro. Cultivations? Now we are the rainforest. This is the rainforest, yeah, okay. This is between rainforest and moorland zone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So day after we go at the moorland. Mm -hmm. I'll find the Z, then it's not there. One hour done, how are you feeling? Good, for now. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two more hours, and I think we're stopping for lunch in a minute. So far so good, it's just been like a nice little hike. It's not very steep or technical. Just here following our guide and coming along the path with plenty of water, which is the only thing that's kind of heavy on this backpack. Yeah. Other than that, I think we're doing good. So we reach Kisambioni, our spot for having our lunch picnic, one hour and a half away from where we started. <laughs> <laughs> so first lunch we have some vegetarian options, some potatoes, 
and a little vegetable wrap. And for us, the meat eaters, we got some meat sandwiches yeah. and some chicken. Yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. Good food. So here on the first stop, they actually have toilets and all. One for the ladies. How's your squatty potty in there? Uh, the squatty potty, you can see it. It's a very clean squatty potty. It is. Go get your squats. <laughs> And this is the guys. I'm pretty impressed so far by all the amenities here on the mountain so far. So we have one hour left to the Mandira Huts. I'm cutting through the thick forest, which is completely beautiful and full of green and nature, which definitely reminds me that we should always try to connect more with nature and worry less about wanting more and more for no reason and try to live a good and simple life probably will make most of us happier okay so three hours later finally made it to the Mandara Hut Station 2720 altitude and this is very nice You made it first day Good job Made it first day let me show you a bit here in the Mandara huts actually being in a couple of different hikes we are pretty impressed with how they are keeping everything this is the main toilet pp rooms here and some showers in there that we'll be trying later then they have all the huts here this is apparently where dinner will be served later on and come let's check out our hut we got this nice looking hut here number eight hello all right <laughs> give us the tour so welcome to our hut <laughs> uh, we there's have our beds and we and got very lucky there's nobody else in here. Yeah, normally you have to share if there's a lot of people, so they will sleep four people here. But because there's not a lot of people in this station, that's why we got so lucky and it's the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so they just brought a little bit of hot water for a little nice warm shower. So after arriving, we have our high tea <laughs> by the mountain with some popcorn. Some hot water. Well, we got you some. You have the option. Awesome. Milo. Milo. Af Afri Afri coffee. coffee. <laughs> or you have African tea. Yeah. And we also brought a couple of good old sneakers for little desserts. But yeah, so far, this is super nice after a long hike. So, this is the Maundi or Maundi crater and it's a pretty cool space here right in the middle of the mountain as you can see full of vegetation so these are the other structures of the Mandura huts some of these actually seem to be a little newer. Alright, so dinner time, we got some zucchini soup, soup, some bread. Yeah. We'll see what else is on the way, but so far so good. So I feel like we're having a three more course here on the mountain. It's got some vegetables, 
potatoes, fish. They're totally treating us really nice now. Good morning. It's day two. We woke up super early, 6.30 in the morning. Again, they brought us a little bit of hot water. It was super nice of them. We just packed up and we are ready to go. We have about six hours, so let's go. Yeah, so on day two, we start seeing different vegetation. Zone. The Moonland Zone. Oh, the nickname we call Europe Zone. Yeah? Europe Zone. Yeah. All right, so we arrived to the Europe Zone of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> we come from the jungles, which is Amazon there. <laughs> yes. And then our friends here are giving us some basic Swahili for if you come to the mountain. Yeah. How do you call people when you say hello? Jumbo. 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 <laughs> or mambo. Or mambo. Or jumbo mambo. <laughs> and then what's and the then strategy ha. for coming up the mountain? Uh, polo polo. Pole pole. Ay, it's pole pole. <laughs> pole, pole. Pole, pole. Pole, pole. pole. Which means go slow. And then if you say only pole one time, it's sorry. Right? Yes. <laughs> but if you say it twice, pole pole. It goes slow. Take it slow. And then how do you say thank you again? Asante. 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 And then if you want no worries, Hakuna Matata. Yeah, Hakuna Matata. Like you learned from the Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> so, not even two hours in, day two, and we are already climbing above the clouds and the view is just amazing. Jumbo Mambo! Two hours of day two and we're still feeling pretty good. We just stop here for a quick rest and they actually have some built toilets here. I'll show you this Quarry Fatty how it looks on this side of the world and we'll continue our way to Harun Bohat, which is somewhere around there. So you always definitely have to be very grateful of all these borders and depending if you decide to climb or just watch this kind of video for fun and you don't have such a hard job, be great, very grateful that there's a lot of people that have very tough jobs every day. All of these guys carry a lot of weight with food, supplies, and all the necessities for all the climbers. On one hand, it's kind of hard because you kind of feel kind of bad, but on the other hand, you're definitely supporting them with jobs. So just make sure you don't bring a lot of stuff that you don't need. We barely brought any clothing also make sure you tip them very well if you decide to come to the mountain they are the blood of all these hikes and they're the ones that make it possible Almost reaching the clouds, the higher you go, definitely the vegetation starts changing, a lot more dry, 
a lot more dust on the road which makes me not me makes it harder to walk and climb but so far we're feeling good no signs of altitude sickness or anything like that so feeling good to continue in this journey Eleven forty-five, day two. We made it to our launch spot after three hours and a half. How are you feeling? Good. A little tired. Yeah. Tired. There's some big birds waiting here for the <laughs> for meat for the le vegetarian <laughs> leftovers. They're like too bad. Gotta eat vegetables. <laughs> Lunch of day two. Had some good chicken here again. Vegetarian sandwich. Egg. <laughs> sandwich. Very good. Mm -hmm. And a good company. <laughs> <laughs> so this bird here wants to eat her chicken. Do they eat bones? Getting yeah, closer and closer. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can eat uh, give him the bone later. So almost one hour to the Horombo Hut and we were just listening to one of our favorite podcasts shout out to Stephen West and his really cool Philosophize This podcast and he was talking about the Spanish philosopher Jose Ortega Jose Ortega had a very famous saying where he said, I am, I am my circumstances. And uh, it just made us think that it's 100% truth. There are so many things that we don't have control over. We are born in a country in an economic status, into a family, even into an age and time in history. And we have no control of any of this whatsoever. But there are many circumstances that we do have control over. And those are the ones that hopefully with the choices we make in life, we can start creating better circumstances for ourselves so I guess the goal is to not dwell on the circumstances that you cannot control but try the best you can in life to improve the circumstances that you do have control over and uh, I guess Hiking and doing things that are hard sometimes. It's a very good exercise to put this into practice. To remember that even doing hard things can bring a lot of joy into your life. So, just a little shout out of philosophy on this video. What's your comment on circumstances and what you make of them? Well, you always have the choice to make it miserable or to enjoy the moment. That's true. Uh, are you enjoying this miserable moment? <laughs> oh, it's not miserable. No, right now it's not bad at all. It's just tiring. Yeah. But it's good for your heart, good for your health. A hundred percent. You can think of whatever you want <laughs> while you're walking. It's like, without... a, <laughs> like a long meditation. Yeah. All right. We'll be in the Horombo Huts pretty soon. And <laughs> see you there. On the third day. <laughs> well, now we'll show them around Horombo. <laughs> 
Don't skip too fast. <laughs> There it is, we made it to the second camp, which is called Horombo. And again, very nice, what it looks to be cabins. We'll see them from up close in a minute. It seems like they continue construction here for more and more cabins. Today seems like there's a bigger group up there, but yeah. We're happy to call day two a success today. Entrance to Porombo Hut at an elevation of 3,720 meters. And we are five hours, nine kilometers to Kibu Hut and 11 hours to Uhuru Peak. So we just arrived to Horombo Hut and look at these cabins and they even say that they have some VIP ones <laughs> but these already feel like VIP. pretty nice. It's got two beds on this side, a really nice table here, two oh, other beds and yeah it's super nice and we are lucky again we're gonna get the room for ourselves <laughs> and even though we have four beds tell them what's most likely gonna happen how did we sleep last night we slept last night the two of us in one bed <laughs> to keep warm <laughs> so yeah it helps because <laughs> the other people they were complaining yeah we were not cold so yeah this is nice is it? yeah yeah Oh, okay. okay, so I can take this. <laughs> Say hi to the camera. Okay, okay. This is the guy that makes our life a lot better here in the yes. mountains. Okay, okay. Third day and longest day. Getting <laughs> an awesome shower. A cat shower. <laughs> with hot water feels like a luxury spa <laughs> in the mountain oh yes as we wake up to this beautiful view above the clouds everything is freezing even the water from the tank as you can see it's totally now converting into ice but looking forward to the last push, very long day today until the next station and then waking up at midnight at the end of the day for summit. <laughs> Feeling good? Yes, my fingers, they're numb. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah, the altitude does that. Eight forty-five, day three. You can see all the people that work on these expeditions as we get started to do our push.
These are the rescue carts where they normally put a little mattress and carry people down that need to come down due to altitude sickness or anything else. So now we clearly see our goal for today and tomorrow, the big Kibo peak up front. All right, so last night I ate some meat and uh, I hadn't eaten any meat for a couple of days, so it didn't hit my stomach too good, but nothing major. But thankfully, some nice lady that's on the trail, she's a doctor and she had some emodium to help my stomach. So feeling good. We have our last push and we see the mountain top summit, which is very close to us. How are you feeling? Good. I don't have tingling on my fingers anymore. <laughs> that's good. I don't have a headache, so that's good. And I'm not sure of breath. That's, <laughs> I guess that's pretty good. Everything check, check, check. Check, 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 yeah. As they say here, in Swahili, pole pole, take it easy. Especially as we're doing the five day with no acclimatization. So today's the day that we're gonna go the highest before reaching summit. So it's better to just pretty much take the whole day to make our bodies acclimatize to the altitude. So the way that Tanzanian people say, it's you have to do pole pole, as Santi was saying, go slowly. That's the way to kill Kilimanjaro. Yes. So far. So good. So good. Hakuna Matata. Hopefully the stomach will treat me good and the altitude will treat Vicky good. That's why you gotta be a vegetarian. <laughs> good, good point. Thing. Good point. <laughs> I will definitely stick to just vegetables for the next few days. We now have a little descent on a pretty straightforward road to our camp, somewhere around there. And we can clearly see our route to summit. And it's just Beautiful, beautiful day here. This huge valley, not really a place for women to be, be. So the best part is this big rock right here. A woman's toilet in the valley before the picnic area with a very amazing view so we are about to reach the last stop and as you can see this cable here takes the wi-fi to all the base camps which is just crazy how they have this cable going for kilometers and kilometers to bring wi-fi to all the camps So after a very long morning, we finally reach our spot for lunch. This has been definitely the day 
that's been the longest before launch time but so far so good as you can see we build these nice little spots with tables and chairs with an amazing view of all the mountains another lunch with chicken I think it's some taro some fried sandwich with peanut butter beautiful wife <laughs> with a beautiful view Here we have it in the distance, under the clouds. First glance of Kibo camp. The last camp before summit. We're home for today. It's starting to get cold. Yes. We're almost there. Almost to the clouds. Almost to the clouds. We'll sleep with the clouds tonight. <laughs> this is like everything in life. You work hard towards something or last home base is just behind this little hill here. But we don't see it. You just have to go slow, be patient, and trust that you'll get there. That's true for relationships, business, and anything you want to accomplish. Just pick your north and go towards it. We made it. We made it. Kibo oh. Hut. That's right. Alpine Desert at 4,720 altitude. Long, long day, but Super stoked to make it all the way here. We got it. So here's the plan for tomorrow or tonight actually. We'll wake up at midnight. We have Gilmore's Point at four kilometers, Stella 4.5, and the famous Uhuru Peak at six kilometers. Hopefully we can make it in six hours and in time for sunrise. And we got super lucky because just as we walked in, the weather totally changed. It started raining a little bit, but we made it. We're about to go check into our hut, take a little rest, and go for early dinner because we gotta go to sleep pretty early today as we need to wake up right at midnight to start climbing the peak that's somewhere there on the clouds so these are the Kibo huts and our awesome guides getting us again because we're lucky there's not so many people a private room so proud of you baby you made it well not yet <laughs> don't call it too too early so again, just like last night, it looks exactly the same with two bunk beds and we got lucky again, I think we'll be here by ourselves, but we just arrived, I need to go to the toilet <laughs> and then go check out this place, have some food and get some rest. 
we are ready. We're ready. All right. Yeah. We're ready. ready. Midnight. Ready Beautiful sky. Let's go, pole pole. Yeah. To the summit. Pole pole. Look at this sunrise. And five hours and a half of pole pole. A very strong Vicky. Hiking, hiking to the top. Freezing hands. Freezing shoes. Not easy. Amazing sunset, six hours from Kibo, and now we continue on the way with the best guides all the way to Gilmar Point. Let's do it. Gilman's point. Five thousand six hundred. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, good job. Uh, uh. So this is the famous crater. Kilimanjaro and over there you can see the little tiny ice cap that's still standing during the not rainy season and whew, don't be fooled by the pretty sunrises this is no joke the altitude Hit your head, hit your chest, and every step, every few steps feels like a marathon. Nonetheless, we're happy to 
be having this experience. I'm mostly proud of this lady in blue right here for being so freaking strong and making it all the way here. Or before the very last point, we have Estela at 5756. We literally have no more gas in the tank, but we're gonna attempt to make it all the way there to the totally highest point of Kilimanjaro we'll take it easy and these are some of the small glaciers still left in Kilimanjaro which was likely in a couple of decades of years won't be here anymore. So if you come to Kilimanjaro thinking that it's all fun and games and just waiting to have that sexy Instagram photo at the highest point in Africa at one of the most important mountains in the world is not this is what you'll be looking for hours on end the shoes of the person right in front of you that's just as crazy as you to keep going pole pole all the way to the top that's the view that you get right there at the end you get to see Mount Meru which is near Arusha and some more glaciers. And here you have it, the famous Uhuru Peak, the highest point in all of Africa, 5,895. Total respect to everyone that makes it here. It's freaking hard. 
You made it, baby. This over and all the way to the top. Really, really tough. Here we are. Highest point of Africa. Crater. Insane view above the clouds. it we made it back to where we started safe and sound some of the porters here singing from another team popping beers and champagne as they say goodbye to the tourists that made it all the way to the top
Asante. 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 Asante.